Hello, welcome to another video. We have an integral here that has a seemingly complicated integrand and this might be very tough to take care of unless you pay attention to details. Now, looking at this, yeah, this is really complicated, but there's something suspicious about the integrand and even the boundaries. Pay attention first to the boundaries. The boundaries are negative 3 and 3. And anytime you see the negative of a number and the same number positive on top as the boundaries of integration, you want to suspect that there has to be something with the property of the integrand being an odd function because it makes your life a lot easier. You just have to be able to show that the function is odd or even. However, if you read through this, this is x to the fifth cosine x, there's a plus one here. If we multiply out and have two separate integrals, can we then take care of them separately? So that's the first move we're gonna make and then we'll find out. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is do the multiplication. Okay, so we say this is equal to the integrand from negative 3 to 3 of, we we'll multiply this by this, so we're going to have the square root of 9 minus x squared multiplied by x to the fifth cosine x dx. Then we add it to another integrand from negative 3 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. Okay, so now we have two integrands. Now, I certainly know that this is not an odd function. This is an even function. How do I know? Because if I plug in negative x instead of x, I'm going to still end up with 9 minus x squared. Because when you square negative x, it's going to become x squared again. So this clearly is an even function. This is even. Okay? So there is no trick. I have to integrate this. There's no way out of it. If I go here, I know that cosine x is an even function. This part is even. Because cosine minus x is the same thing as cosine x. So it's an even function. This guy here is an odd function. Because if I change x to minus x and I raise it to the fifth power, I'm going to end up with negative x to the fifth. So this is an odd function. Okay. And we already established that this is even. So based on what I have, I have an even function here. The integrand here is even. What do I have here? Is this even or odd? Let's see. Well, if we were dealing with numbers, when you have two even numbers multiplied by an odd number, your answer is supposed to be even. Okay, watch out. See, if we had two times, let's call this 4, and then you have 3. Well, the product of these three will be even, because that gives you 24, right? But that's not the case. The opposite is the case when it comes to functions. So you just imagine that we have two even functions, let's say x squared and x to the fourth, and you multiply by x. What do you get? You get x to the seventh. So when it comes to functions, the product of two even functions is still even, but once you multiply by an odd function, then it becomes odd. The product of two odd functions should be even. That means this entire integrand is odd. So everything we've got here is odd. So this is an odd function. And because it's an odd function, we don't need to do any integration for the first part because the boundary it's symmetric and opposite, okay, about the, um, about the x-axis, okay? So when you plot this graph of this function, it's something that goes this way, such that you're going from minus 3 
to plus 3 and the area here is the same as the area here and both of them will cancel each other out. So this integrand here is absolutely zero. So let's go back here. So this implies is equal to, so I'm going to break it down this way, the integrand from negative 3 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared times x to the fifth cosine x dx plus the integrand from negative 3 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. This is equal to 0 plus this integrand, negative 3 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. So all you need to integrate is this. Now, how do you integrate this? You could go about this using trig substitution, saying that let... Um, sine theta be x over 3 or let x be 3 sine theta and then you can do that substitution but I want to in interpret this as a circle how do I know I'm just gonna say look let y be equal to this so let's say this function is 9 minus x squared clearly from what I see I know that y squared equals 9 minus x squared if I square both sides and if I collect the like terms what do I get I get x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared that is equals 9 and this is the equation of a circle of radius 3 which I can easily represent this way so I'm going from negative 3 to 3 and because it's a circle it's symmetric about the origin is symmetric about the y-axis, symmetric about the x-axis. So I can easily say that this integral is the same thing as 2 times the integral from 0 to 3. So I'm just going to double it. And it's the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. Because if you go from negative 3 to 3, it's the same thing as going from 0 to 3. So I might as well just go from 0 to 3 and double it. So that means I'm just going from here to here for the circle. It's just a quarter circle, radius 3. So this is a circle of radius 3. Okay? So it is a quarter circle, actually. It is a circle... Um, a quarter circle, maybe I should have said a quarter circle. This is 1 over 4 circle, okay? Because we're just going from here to here, not the full thing. So, how do you find the area of the quarter of a circle? Mm, we're going to say, and by the way, there's two of it. So, it's half of a circle, actually, because this is where we're going. It's from negative 3 to 3, but I'm going to do my calculation, but then I'm going to double it, so it's half. Let's just say it's 1 half. Okay, that makes it fine. And what's one half of a circle of radius 3? So we know that the integral, so um, that is 2 times the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx is equal to 1 half, right there, of a circle pi r squared where r equals 3. Okay, so what's that? This is going to be 1 half of pi times 3 squared, which is equal to 9 pi over 2 square units. And this is the answer. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.